How's JoJo? Uh, did you have to ask him? Uh, obviously, I think you probably saw him go through the locker room, but um, it's good to have him around, and, and uh, we'll just take a day to day with him. Are you expecting practice today? Not today, no. You expect him just out there with the guys and kind of be reacclimated and all that? Yeah, that's that's his call to get out there, you know. Um, so he, he feels up to it, so we'll let him get out there and spend as much time as he needs to. Did it surprise you today, or was that kind of like, dang, that's interesting? No. No, we've, we've been in good communication. Ted, obviously from a production standpoint, I think you say how important it is for Tippett to be out here, and you had a chance to go back and kind of see some of his movement. What type of impact do you feel like he had on the team and his presence out here? What happened? Tremendous amount. You know, he's, um, he's full bore 100% every rep in practice, every rep in the game. It causes a lot of problems for the team. they got to focus a lot of attention on him. Makes those around him better, you know, and and those around him make him help his success as well, you know, with the interior alignment and same on the other side. So um, happy to have him. Uh, he's done a great job. He's he's having a good camp right now, and uh, we're expecting great things from him this year. When you're talking about just his journey through the NFL and how it didn't necessarily pay off for the success that he has now, when you see a player that kind of was able to overcome something like that and be as productive as he is, what do you think you can attribute that maybe to the offense? Uh, well, the determination, you know, and understand that it's about consistency oftentimes. It's just getting a little better every day. And I think that's a good message even for some of the young guys we got that, that we drafted this year. It's They look up and they see, you know, at the end spot, they see Sam Hubbard and Trey Hendrickson. Well, well Sam and Trey weren't Sam and Trey uh, their first year in the league. You know, they had their growing pains and they had to learn every year, veterans helping them along, them earning a couple tricks, learning a couple tricks of the trade, getting stronger. Um, gaining more experience, and so it's just a good lesson that uh, you just you just keep at it, keep keep um, eliminating your mistakes, keep getting better in some of your areas of weakness, um, learn how to play off your teammates, you know, and to use them to help each other, and uh, and you can get to the point where where a lot of your guys are at. So the install starts to phase out to an extent. We got most of the stuff in. Um, this week, obviously, we get to put on pads starting tomorrow. So you get to do a little more of the one-on-ones, uh, you know, a lot more tackling drills than we've done these last two weeks. And then once the install gets in, it becomes more game-like in terms of we take the script away from the guys so there's not the prep work that some of the younger guys can do to know what's coming at him in practice and becomes more call it periods. We call it, you know, where it's more a game, it's more unpredictable in terms of what play is going to come in the huddle. They know what personnel grouping's in there, but they're not sure what the play is until they hear it in the huddle for the first time. And so that's that's where you start to get them ready for that first game against Arizona and what it's going to be like. So um, this week, again, finishing up the install, getting acclimated to the pads, and then we start to take away um, some of the scripted periods and start to do more call it periods. Three pads, putting three pads through one-on-ones, how are you evaluating? Well, just all the things that, that you can see that show up without the pads on. You know, his understanding of the defense, um, understanding how to attack the, the different schemes that run on offense, you know, get off on the snap, and uh, just great hand usage. You know, you can see that. That's what I really like about our veterans. It's just some of the, the details that they're doing, even in walkthroughs and jogthroughs, just on terms of hand placement and some of that hand-to-hand -hand combat stuff. It's They're still working that stuff, even though it's not full feed, even though it's not pads. Um, that's when you can tell you've, you've got a team that you're excited just to watch walk through because of how they do those different things. You watch, um, you know, uh, Ted and Alex against, you know, DJ and DJ and Sam Hubbard over there sometimes on that side and Trey and some of the hand-to-hand the -hand combat that they have just in a walkthrough setting. It's fun to watch for me. Um, so those are the things that we can still continue to improve on. What did you think of Chris Harris? I think it was a positive start. You know, it was um, – we utilized him in certain ways. We felt that highlighted his strengths. Now the next step is just becoming that that full back, you know. And and the the facts are he didn't get a ton of carries there his last two years in Michigan, and so those are the opportunities where he's got to step up, and 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 start to accumulate some more runs, um, really step up in pass protection. He's year two, so having a complete understanding of the playbook, you know, and not being a guy that makes the mistakes that the rookies make. And so, again, he can take that next step. He, he's still got some work. He's got a lot of talent. Um, we're glad he's here, and we're excited to work with him. And, and I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, Travion was a guy that was, was inactive quite a bit last year, but I think he's had a good camp too. So there, there's a good 
um, environment there that's that's pushing growth for both guys and um, you know that'll be fun to watch those guys compete as training camp keeps going. Yeah, it's and and just young running backs, just understanding who to block, you know, and how to block them, and um, those are the things that we'll continue to see growth from from those guys. Do you, do you envision any world where Keith is the number three running back and Pickett is the third down back, or is that Samaje? Well, I think we're always pushing that. Now, the, it, there's a ways to go there because Samaje is um, solid in those areas where uh, you know he, he's a, a good security blanket for us. He knows what to do. He's he's really good with the ball in his hands. Um, good in pass protection, understands the pass game. So there's a lot of tremendous qualities to Samaje. Um, he's certainly got a, a leg up right now in that battle. But that's what training camp's for is plenty of times guys step up and have huge growth, and, and we'll see where it goes. There's always competition at all those spots to earn playing time. It's not always this is the two and this is the three. It's this guy gets these reps, and those reps can start to increase based on what they prove they can do. And so um, it's not always just a, a clear-cut depth chart, especially at the running back position. I think it's been positive. You know, today, today, tomorrow are, are big days. You know, that install continues to grow for those guys. So now, um, where they're particularly young guys, probably playing with some confidence the first couple of days because the install was limited. Now you, you start getting different adjustments from the offense. You get more coverages on defense. So, um, you know, you expect there to be some mistakes um, this week from some of those guys. How quickly do they learn from them? How quickly does it make sense to them? How quickly can they then get up to speed and play to their full potential because they're not thinking as much? That, that's going to take some time. But um, so far, I think that's been a positive group so far early in training camp. I, I've liked what I've seen. How will it go? For me, oftentimes, it's more the, the tape. Um, some guys may stand out, but, but you're, you're trying to watch a full 22 um, of what's going on. So th there may be some things that you don't notice as much. Um, until you watch the tape. So that, that, that usually is the, the ultimate judge there when we finally get a chance to watch it after practice. How is Dax helping? Good. You know, he, he um, really uh, uh, about the right stuff, you know, and his approach, great personality. I think he's fit in really well with the defense and the team. And, uh, you know, these reps that he's accumulating are, are just invaluable for him to be able to get that and be able to communicate with some of these other vets that we've got back there. And so – um, it'll be fun to watch him continue to grow over the course of training camp. How do you think that will affect that? I mean, Eli has been a really solid player for us. So, I, I mean, people, you know, judge things off of off of. We have we have a ton of guys who who uh, maybe there were plays to be made that you'd want back. There's calls that I want everybody, but I, I thought Eli was really solid for us down the stretch. Um, that's why we re-signed the guy, because we, we like what he's been about. We like his play that he's been over there. Um, he's a great communicator with those guys on defense. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're certainly happy to have him. And he competes every single play. That's what you want from those DBs. Guys are going to get beat. You better have a short memory. Um, I think all of our guys do a great job. If, if they give up a play, they, they put that one behind them and come back and get right back in your face the next play. And that's what we want to see. That's the mentality we want from our DBs. And um, he certainly fits that mold. Yeah, yeah. It, it, no, there's no question about it. He he's got confidence in himself, and that's the first step to playing in this league, man. If you got any self doubt, um, then that's that's a tough hill to overcome there. And um, so again, I, I think that he's got a lot of confidence in himself, and we got a lot of confidence in him as well. To to keep it rolling, you know, BJ really, um, you know, he didn't get training camp with us, so he showed up, you know, the week of the first game, and really hit his stride as the season went went, and so we feel really good about him him jumping back in there um, and being a starter for us, and then you've got guys behind him like Josh and um, Tyler Shelvin and, and Zach as well, and there's some guys that got to compete for those jobs and provide that depth. Because the more guys you can roll through in there, are usually the better to keep keep our older guys fresh. Um, so again, when the pads come on, you learn a little bit more about some of the guys that have the less experience. And I'm excited to see how that takes shape over these next two weeks. I think Alex um, in these next couple of days will start to be phased in here. Um, 
you know, and so you, you'll start to see him slowly and be incorporated in some of the team stuff. Um, LC will just continue to take it day to day for him right now. When it comes to team captains or leaders in general, I know they come in all shapes, sizes, and styles, but is there a common denominator? Is there something that a guy has to have about him as a team leader? I think um, our team votes on it. And so the team is what usually, especially four years into um, an environment that everyone's familiar with, they know the players, they know the guys we've added, um, they, they, they see the truth in the guys. And so I always um, have no doubt that our guys will select really good leaders, you know, that uh, the team believes in, does their job. Um, when they're in this building, man, they're all about ball. They put in the work that's necessary. They're not afraid to speak up when they need to because that's the job as a captain, you know, is um, to let me know when there's concerns that, that I need to be aware of. And the captains have done a great job of that in the past. And, you know, there's only so many guys you can select. We've, we've got – more than enough captains. So it's always interesting to see who ends up getting it. Um, and then there's a couple guys, you know, you could probably have 20 captains on our team right now and feel comfortable with it. Uh, but at the end of the day, that's, that's, you don't carry that many. In your mind, is, is leadership innate or is it something that a guy can kind of grow into? And Absolutely. I, yeah, I think you guys can grow into it. I've seen that firsthand. You know, some guys that maybe as their role has expanded, um, they may, may play a position that, that demands some leadership. That doesn't mean that they have to be totally vocal. Some guys don't say a lot. They, they're about their job. Everyone trusts they're going to do their job. And so in that moment when they do speak up, it, it's coming from a meaningful place, you know. And um, I, I would, you know, I'm not afraid to say this. I would I'd say Sam Hubbard early in his career when we had a lot of veteran players, um, you know, he didn't speak a lot because there was so much veterans behind him. But, man, when he talked, everyone listened, you know. And then over the years as, as he's become more of the veteran, he's – He's a full-blown leader, and he, and he talks when he needs to. But um, he's a guy that really stands out, that everyone just just uh, loved what Sam was all about, that when he did speak, even as a young player, everyone shut up and listened. And uh, that's held true today for him. As the season gets closer and closer, and you're seeing a lot of that Jamar Chase and Tyler and those guys try to see more of the NFL, how much maybe does that play into having a preference, especially with Jamar being so young? Yeah, I've seen no ego from those guys. Um, they continue to put in the work. Um, I'll, I'll put up their work behind the scenes and that practice up against any any trio. And that's all that matters for us. We're, we're not into judging who's the best group. of That doesn't matter. Um, they're the best group of receivers for us. And, and all that matters is that they work as hard and have an understanding of what we want to do as well as any – I can't speak to the other teams, but I'd be willing to put them up against any other trio in all football. And, and that's, all, that's all we ask for. And so very pleased to have those guys, the guys that are in the room with them, build off of that as well. They see the work that these guys that are getting all the snaps put in um, consistently over the course of training camp all the way through the offseason. And in that whole room led by Troy and Brad have, have really stepped up the challenge. And um, it's just a really fun room to be around because of the, the standard that they have for each other. How important is the role of the captain now that you have more than just that guy that you can captain that? Yeah, critical, critical. You know, TB has always been a guy I've loved being about around. Um, no ego to that guy whatsoever. You know, even when Target, there might be games, there, there's been games certainly over the course of his career since I've been here where he maybe was targeted two or three times. And I've had regret leaving a game, like here's one of our best players that we didn't target. And it's always me telling him, hey, just make sure I'm not, I didn't forget about you. You know, I need to get you more involved. And it's whatever, coach, I understand. You know, that's just the way the game went. And um, never once have I heard him complaining about not getting targeted. And um, he just goes out there, works, leads. He's always positive. I don't think I've ever seen T, TB in a bad mood ever since I've been here. And that's one of the things we want when we, we ask for that consistency from our players. Are you the same guy that walks in the building every single day? And it's not a roller coaster of what are we getting today from this player? TB is really the model um, player from that standpoint when it comes to describing what we want to see from, from our coachable players. You know, it's, it's impossible for me to predict if, if – T and Jamar would be the same way they are if, if TB wasn't around. Um, but I certainly am glad that he is because there, there's a veteran who's had a lot of production, a lot of success playing in this league. Those two guys see how he works and and have been able to build off of that. But I think it's innate in those two guys anyway. You know, they, they've, they've come from national champion programs. They understand what the standard is there. That's, that's part of the equation, why we wanted them here. The other part was they're really good when you watch their tape. Um, and we thought they could score a lot of touchdowns for us. But – uh, it, it's just a really fun trio to be around, but but further than that, that not everybody sees all the time. That that room all together is a really fun room. How rare is it? How rare is it to have like a dynasty team that doesn't really have the type of things now that you do for receiver wise? 
I think I think he sees the big picture in it all, and and he understands that um, we're trying to feature the, the 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 most talented players. We want the ball in their hand, and there's just some games over a 17 game season where it doesn't go that way. And um, just fortunate that we've got a guy that's that's got no ego like that, and and uh, understands the big picture. Is it important also to understand there's a big difference between Tyler Cox, who's very confident and, and believes that this is the best group, but that's not the reason he did not want to be there. Yeah, I, yeah, I think there, there's a balance there. Um, but again, our, our guys put in the work, and and it's it's one thing you'd say something to a player who who you know speaks out a little bit if you knew behind the scenes they they didn't put in the work. Our guys put in the work, you know, and so they're confident in themselves and. Um, they're on a big stage in, in the highest level of all football, and you got to have confidence in yourself, like I said earlier. And so um, we've certainly got a group that's got that, and I think that's a very positive thing. Zach, when you see guys who are already lost for the season that you're barely touching each other and don't lose, and you get ready to put the pads on tomorrow and, uh, <laughs> and you know, get back and you want to see the physicality, how do you balance? How do you figure out that balance between caution and you want to see the physicality to decide who's the less close to Yeah, it's football. And, and um, these are all professional athletes. They're, they have to compete. They got to compete now, um, so that they're ready to hit the ground running when the season comes. And you know, we do spend a lot of time talking to our guys about what are our expectations. How do how do we expect in certain situations? You can highlight here, here's what we would have rather you do differently to help your teammate. Um, but at the end of the day, they got to compete. You know, and, and it's you don't want to take the stinger out of them uh, in training camp, where then they feel like they're rolling into the season and they haven't had a chance to fully unleash. What they're capable of, so there's just that balance of of protecting your teammates and and still getting yourself ready for for week one against Pittsburgh. I know you said you might find different ones uh, for practicing, but just to have them out there in the surrounding locker room again, especially at the same time like training camp, what does that do for morale when you just have that unexpected injury and he comes back and he's just ready to go? I have to imagine that's a positive for you. It certainly is a positive. You know, he he lifts the team up. Um, in more than one ways, and so I think for everybody to see him after not having seen him for a couple of days is is certainly a positive that our guys can build on. Thank you. Thank you.